Look at that eye, bro. Look at that eye. That's it. That's it. It's over. Impressive performance by now the unified WBC, WBA, IBF. Unified champion of the world. First stoppage since Carlos Ocampo in 2018, nearly four years ago. Coming off of a 13-month layoff from a torn retina. Before that, he was also on a 13-month layoff. So two 13-month layoffs. Remember how I was talking about last week? Let me mute this. Remember how I was talking about how, like last week about like how you know, like, there's special fighters, you know, like, special talent. Errol Spence is special talent. You know, like, Erickson Lubin, I never considered him to be a special talent. I never considered Chris Colbert to be a special talent. Special talent in the day's boxing are guys like Errol Spence, Shakur Stevenson, um, Canelo Alvarez, Vasil Lomachenko. You know, Devin Haney's having some rough, had a rough spot, but he's a special talent. You know, Jamel Charlo, these are special talents. And right now, I got to be honest. I'm going to rate this as Earl Spence's biggest win. Damn, his eye is fucked. He don't want to bite touching it. Completely closed. And you know, um, I'm, I'm going to give you my uh, scores here. Yo, Dennis, oh shit, my man is blind. He's blind. Let's listen to the punch stats. He neutralized him. He was much busier than Ugas, gave himself... 784 of 216 landed by Spence, 96 of 551. He completely neutralized him, neutralized everything that Ugas had to give him. I do have a highlight of the time that Earl Spence got hurt in round number six, but mostly that was a, um, that was an error on his part. He went chasing after the mouthpiece and, you know, protect yourself at all times. Here, I'll show you the clip really quick. Let you know uh, what happened. Take your time out before they uh, read the particulars. They're getting the gloves off and everything. Listen to the post-fight interview. And then we're going to go live. But yeah, base, but yeah um, he gets hit with an uppercut. This was after the mouthpiece was out. You can see the mouthpiece right here. But he went to go, but he he kind of like blacked out a little bit. That the you can't see the uppercut right here. I'm gonna give you a clip. Oh wait, let's listen in. They're about to do particulars. We'll go back and look at one of the punches that was so important for him, which was the uppercut. The uppercut. He landed repeatedly. Um, both men have. That was one that really hurt Ugas. Both men had good uppercuts coming into this fight. We thought. They and eventually they started going through the guard. For Ugas, for Spence it was. And Yo, he just mold him down. Like Ugas that was that was really like fight. a perfect Chance example of man down. With Spence and gave him opportunities to land that punch, and, he never and you can tell he wanted it. Like that's a yo, Spence that's a big time stoppage counter. right there, bro. He always right in, in the right position, making angles. Like I said, great uppercuts, great combination from. Merrill I'm just Spence. glad that he, that he won. So Let's now we can get Spence versus Crawford. It looks like it's going to happen at the end of the year because you never seen Showtime really promote another fighter who's Ladies not in their the stable. And that's all everybody's been talking about. It's Crawford. In charge, Lawrence Cole stops the contest upon advice of the phenomenal performance. Position. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated, and now the WBC, WBA, and IBF unified. Look at them belts with the gold. Champion of the world, the truth. So, look, I don't know, bro. Him and Terrence Crawford. That's a 50-50 fight. Spence naturally bigger. All right, Morrill, thank you very much. Doesn't mean he's stronger. Merrill, congratulations. You've got the three belts. Thank you. Let's listen in. It means a lot, man. It means a lot fighting in my hometown in front of my family, my friends, and everybody else who support me. These are my number one fans right here that came out and supported me. And they continue to support you. You had the 17-month layoff. You had the eye surgery. 
So there were a lot of questions coming into this fight. Did you have any doubts? I didn't have any doubts at all. Like I said, I believe in myself 100%. I trained 100%, and I just knew I was going to come with the victory. So that's who I wanted. I didn't want to tune up fight or fight somebody I know I could be. I wanted somebody who was going to bring the best out of me, and I knew who guys was going to bring the best out of me. You were in terrific condition, and you had a new conditioning coach and a nutritionist. How much did that help? Uh, my nutritionist helped a lot. Um, you know, he made sure I was eating right, made sure I was drinking water, no junk food, and I lost the weight properly without using a sauna suit, sitting in a sauna sweat room. I, I lost the weight like how I was supposed to lose the weight, scientific. And he did a great job, and I got down to 147 pounds, and I was looking strong. Thank you. You're a great champion. Congratulations. Thank you. Your combinations were so effective tonight. What enabled that? Um, just my work in the gym. Um, I felt I felt a little off, like my timing was a little off, but I knew I was gonna catch on later on in the rounds. So um, you know, I just kept working, I kept uh, throwing punches and and then sometimes I was being overpatient and then I was like just throwing punches instead of just picking my shots. But I think, you know, that was due to the to the long layoff and I was, you know, super excited to get back in the ring and I was trying to push the pace more than I needed to. Looked like you got caught in the sixth round. Your mouthpiece went out. You turned away, and then you took a couple of shots. What happened there? Um, well, I thought I thought the ref had said stop, so I stopped, <laughs> and then and then you still hit me with like three or four shots. So I know, knew it. That was a rookie mistake on myself. You know, you're supposed to protect yourself at all times, and I didn't do that at all. Were People call him bullshit already, saying that it's fixed. You motherfuckers, man. I turned and looked at my mouthpiece, and then he hit me, and I was like, oh shit. Ugas was paid to take a dive. Damn, you motherfuckers. When I, kept, when I tried to put my hands up, he had stopped anyway because the ref had jumped in. So it was, it was all right. How is it that you have managed to become a better fighter through that all man the beat the shit out of through Lucas. the car accident, through the eye? How is it that you've improved? Um, just, I believe, I believe in, you know, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You know, I went through a lot of trials, you know, I got tested. And, you know, I passed the test due to, you know, just my upbringing, my mother, my father always, you know, telling me not to quit. Not to I don't up. think he was hurt by that. Believing in myself and my family. It just knocked and the mouthpiece out. I wrong and know I could come back. So I was like, man, why, why would I just quit now and I can come back and I can still be at my best? I just got to train hard, stay focused, listen to my coach and, you know, just stay out the way. What's next? Oh, well, everybody know who I want next. I want Terrence Crawford next. Said it. That's that it. Happen. Huh? You're going to make that happen? Oh, definitely. That's the fight that I want. That's the fight everybody else wants. Like I said, I'm going to get these straps and I'm going to go over there and take his shit too. All right. Harold, congratulations. Terrific fight this evening. Thank you, man. Now, straps. See, he did it. He called him out. Baby. Terrence, I'm coming for that motherfucking belt. All right. He did it. He collected his belts. He, he said he did what he was going to do. He said he was going to do. Cleaned up his side of the street. Look at his face. The swelling looks worse because he doesn't have any eyebrows. I feel sad. I feel sad because I trained really hard for this fight. Uh, all my respect to Errol Spence. He's a great champion. Um, and just sad of what happened tonight. Does he feel the stoppage was proper and can he see out of his eye? Or, or was he not able to have any vision? I wanted a battle. I couldn't see from the eye. The referee stopped the fight, but I wanted to keep going till the end. In the sixth round, it seemed for just a moment that you might have had an opportunity to take this fight when his mouthpiece left. Did he feel that he had an opportunity then? And, and what happened from his vantage point? Tú tuviste la oportunidad cuando se le sacó la boca. ¿Qué pensó? ¿Qué pensaste que podía llevarte la pelea ahí? Sí, pensé que que tenía una oportunidad ahí. Spence es un gran campeón, se recuperó. Mucho respeto a Spence, a su entrenador. No, I definitely had, uh, I felt an opportunity to win the fight there, but he recuperated well. A lot of uh, 
congratulations goes to him and his manager for, you know, the work they did. Thank you for your time. Hey, hey. gracias. Que, que vale la a mi equipo, a mi entrenador, uno de los mejores del mundo. I want to thank my team, especially one of my best, the best trainers in the world. A todas las personas que me apoyaron y especialmente mi comunidad cubana. And especially my uh, Cuban community that came out to support me. Hoy yo luché aquí y no pude ganar, pero patria y vida y representando mi comunidad cubana. Homeland and liberty. That's for all the people. Thank you very much. <laughs> and finally, happy birthday, Sam Watson. PBC, 68 years old today. All right, Morrow, back to you. Yeah, I'm a good for 68. Yo, listen, that's it. We know what's happening now. You know, no other fight can happen. No other fight at welterweight can happen. We know what the fans want. Terrence Crawford's a free agent. When have you seen, during any broadcast, PBC broadcast, them hype up another fighter so much or talk about another fighter so much from Ray Flores to even, you know, Bron Custer in the build-up content. They've been talking about Terrence Crawford. That's the fight that fans want to see. Something is definitely cooking. Something is definitely cooking. By the way, I gave uh, Ugas generously. Um, round number one, he started off really well with the jab to the body. Seems as though Errol Spence couldn't do nothing with it. And then around round four is when he got neutralized. But I gave Ugas round one and generously round six because of, you know, um, him, Errol Spence losing his uh, mouthpiece. But at, but you can make an argument that even if Errol Spence took that big shot, depending on how you score fights, that still, nonetheless, Errol Spence controlled the fight. I mean, controlled the round. There's a Steve Farhood's card, by the way. Hold on, let me go full screen. And they took it off. But like, bro, you know, and, and now the debate is who's going to win? Who's going to win? 38-0 with 29 KOs. 34-year-old Bud Crawford. Last wins, Kel Brook, Mandatory, Kavalaskis, Amir Khan, Jose Benavide, Benavidez Jr., Jeff Horn. Now, of course, Errol Spence has the better resume. Let's be real here. He has the better resume because he's had the better access to the fighters because of his promotional company, his promotional outlet, PBC. Guys like Danny Garcia, your Dennis Ugas, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia was PBC at the time. You know, Lamont Peterson, you know, Kel Brook, he was the mandatory. He had to take that fight. But now, ain't nobody left. They're, they're, they're the top. Unless Errol Spence wants to go fight Butte. Yeah, put it this way. I see it happening. Here's what um Terrence Crawford had to post. Congratulations. Great fight. Now the real fight happens. No more talk of the side of the street. Let's go. There you go. And there is no more other side of the street. He's no longer with top rank. Like he's a free agent. Like the fight can happen. Now it's all about when it's gonna happen. I'm so looking forward to the end of this year. This is going to be some shit. We're going to have an undisputed champion, you know, in the four belt era at 147 pounds. And it's a fight that we've been clamoring for. And you can see that Errol Spence is not damaged goods. I rate this win high. I rate, I rate this win very high. I rate this win over Ugas, you know, higher than Sean Porter, in my personal opinion, because he neutralized a boxer, a fighter, a type of fighter that he hasn't really seen before at this level. Unless you want to see Mikey Garcia, but Mikey Garcia was a 135 pounder, 140 at best. You know, Kel Brook, I don't really consider him to be more so a, a boxer, like technician. I consider him to be a pressure fighter, you know, power puncher type boxer. I don't know, you know, but not really like a technician like Ugas. And Danny Garcia, well, he's a pressure fighter, power puncher. You know, Sean Porter's a slugger. So the win over oh, your Dennis Ugas, that's some major shit. And he stopped him. And if his eye is broken, then that's even bigger news. He broke his face. Shout out to Errol Spence. Uh, we're going to talk about it in more detail in my post-fight uh, live video with the post-fight press conference. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy. The links to my social media are right down below in the description box. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.